And he worked in the Obama administration, currently is a lawyer here in Washington, D.C., uh, choosing greatness, the theme, pushing for unity in his speech. I guess everybody would embrace that. But how's that going to go over, especially with the person perched behind him, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who just did battle with him over this partial government shutdown and admittedly won? Well, and she's been in this role before, sitting behind the President of the United States. And so I, I think for her, uh, you know, she's going to be looking to hear what the President says about unity and his priorities, which is what the purpose of the State of the Union is. But uh, I don't think uh, the Democratic House is, is going to take too much of what he says uh, to heart as much as what he actually does. And we'll, we'll have to see what he actually does in the coming weeks and months. Talk to me about your time in the Obama administration. How much time and effort goes into this? Because this is really kind of laying out your blueprint, as, as Nathan said, not just for the year ahead. I mean, he's got two years left in office. Yeah. Um, it, it, how important is it? How early do people start working on this? And how does it come together? Yeah, well, I would say in the Obama administration, uh, President Obama was a, a preparation guy. He, you know, prepared for months in advance and uh, took this as an opportunity not just to speak to the American people in Congress, which is what the role of the State of the Union is, but uh, he wanted to uh, explain to people what uh, the role of government is, what his agenda was, what his legacy would be. Um, I think contrasting that with this president, President Trump, is a little bit more of a showman, and he wants to, he likes the attention on him, and uh, I think he cares a little bit less about what he gets the attention for, uh, you know, what the news comes out the next day, as long as it's about him. Uh, he's more, uh, you've got the preparation president, this is the wing it president, yeah. uh, but uh, he will be <laughs> sitting there reading for the teleprompter, not something he likes he terribly. Does, right. uh, China, trade talks, uh, Venezuela, North Korea, uh, what do we expect to hear on those uh, themes? And of course, is he going to double down on the wall, do you think? Yeah, well, and I would add in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, and, and Syria, because, uh, you know, allegedly the half the speech is going to be about foreign policy. Um, I imagine he mentions Venezuela, he mentions uh, a few of these things, but, um, you know, this isn't really his interest area. The wall is his interest area, right? That is. Uh, what really activates, uh, as Nathan said, his base of politics. So I imagine, you know, what excites him is, you know, arguing about the wall and immigration, uh, but he's going to be reading probably carefully when he talks about uh, foreign policy and stuff about which he doesn't spend a lot of his free time thinking about talking about. Uh, you mentioned his base. Uh, he's been uh, very focused on that base, but everyone says if he, if he has any chance of winning a second term, he's got to expand the base. I've been saying that ever since he walked into the Oval Office. It doesn't seem like it's been of interest to him. Do you see him throwing any olive branches or, or trying to expand uh, his base at all this evening? Uh, he doesn't have a problem changing his tune, right, from one day to the next, from one hour to the next. So, uh, you know, and the theme is allegedly supposed to be unity and bipartisanship. So, uh, it, it, and he's demonstrated in the past, he, he, you know, he doesn't have a strong affiliation with a, a party, at least in the past. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts pivoting in the next sort of, you know, tonight, in the next few weeks, months, years, um, to, to try to attract sort of a broader base of voters. Um, but I think, you know, in this age, people want to see, you know, how you're demonstrating that, and that will remain to be seen. Can he actually, you know, move away from, you know, where he's been with his base on particular political issues, and can he actually substantively move them on particular issues, immigration uh, or infrastructure, because the big question is, you know, he's going to talk about infrastructure, but how do you pay for exactly. national infrastructure? And uh, that may be an area where Democrats are interested. But again, as you they point are. out, uh, the, where's the money? Where's the money? Uh, um, and, and then the other thing is these guests. How important are they? How You know, I asked you about yeah. how you mold this thing. Yeah. He's got a young boy by the name of Trump there. Right. Obviously, they've identified him. He's being bullied because of his name, that sort of thing. Talk to me about the guest feature of this. How much time was put into that in the Obama administration? How important is that? Well, every member of Congress, and, and certainly the, the White House and the Speaker and sort of all the important players in this speech tonight have guests that are handpicked and, and usually they're trying to highlight something. It's sort of either local media or national media and international media, they, they can pay attention to this. So um, it's interesting that he's chosen, you know, a, a somebody with, it's actually not interesting. It's not at all surprising that he's chosen someone with the same last name. 
Um, I think, uh, you know, when you say how much did other people spend time on this, I mean a lot because this is a big opportunity to speak to anywhere from 30 to 50, 60 million people directly uh, and then through the news media cycles in the next few days, uh, you know, an opportunity to speak on a local level. Um, it's, it's curious who he's, who he's chosen, but uh, I think it'll be more interesting, you know, sort of on a local level who everybody else chooses. Mm -hmm. Those members of Congress, those are the ones who are speaking to the local news media back home who do really, uh, you know, provide a, an insight to kind of the average voter yeah. about what yeah. we're talking about here. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, you're going to stay with us tonight, so we'll watch the speech yeah. together and we'll get your insights after. Thanks so much. Thank you.